I stand before you today as a Palestinian woman. Not that you will confuse me with a Swedish, but I'm saying this because <laughs> I'm saying this because I am representing El Walaje, when El Walaje is in Palestine. And here it is in the map. El Walaje is actually a microcosm of Palestine. It's a window into the Palestinian people's suffering. It's a glimpse into the Palestinian people resilient, the Palestinian nation resilient. For me, it's one of the most beautiful places on earth, and believe me, I have been to many places on earth. These are a couple of images of my village. And we have one of the oldest olive trees in the world. Not by my opinion, by experts' opinion, decided that this is one of the olive, old, olive trees that are the oldest in the world, and definitely it's the oldest in Palestine. It's in our village. Among this beauty, there is madness. Madness that stems from the Israeli occupation that began back in 1948. In October that year, my entire village was forced out by Zionist militias, and we scattered all over the world as refugees, mainly in refugee camps in Amman. But nobody believed that this is the end of their lives, and there was a determination to move on and reclaim what was rightfully theirs. So a number of families came back to live in what was left of El Walaji at the time, and um, waiting for return but they didn't have what houses or whatever. So people lived in, in caves and in mudrooms. My family, my personal family, lived in a cave for 12 years and um, in anticipation of return, of course. Although we did not return, we could not return to, what, to our original homes, we built new houses and a new community in where, in where we were at the new part of al and what was left of al but we were not left alone. In our village of 18,000 dunums, twice the size of Harlem District in New York, almost twice the size, we lost 11,000 dunums in 48. Each dunum is the equivalent of 1,000 square meters. By 1967, we had 7,000 dunums, but the situation only grew worse. And what happened is that we lost another 4,200 dunums for one, two settlements, Gilo and Har Gilo, one bypass road, and eventually the upper tide wall. We lost, we are left with only 2,800 dunums for those who have a problem with math and the chicken, Dr. Munir, this is no problem. This is just images of the, of the wall in the village. I am one of the leaders of the popular resistance movement in Luwalaje. And um, our campaign is purely nonviolent. What happened, in, even, even we don't have anything in the village, we don't have a zoning plan, we don't have a master plan, we can't apply for a building permit, yet we witness high rate of demolishing houses. One third of the houses of the village already demolished. But we didn't stop. We did, this did not stop us. And uh, we, I mean, our movement is still going on. And again, we are purely nonviolent, even though we are moved, we're, we're faced with severe violence. Almost, we, I would have to say that law is one of our tools to fight the Israelis, taking into consideration or remembering that the Israeli legal system is fundamentally unjust. It's not made for us to take our rights or for whoever people to seek, to seek justice. It's, made, it's an, another arm of the occupation. Almost every single individual of our village is involved in a different case with the state. It, and also as a, as a village, we also collectively filed a lawsuit against the wall. This is a picture of a legal document where 11 people or 12 people filed it because of their land was confiscated. We also, together with other activists, created a safe space for our children and later on became for children and youth because our children grew up and had no other institution to turn into. Uh, we also created a women um, club. Women was often the backbone of our movement. This is my father. 
My father was a great inspiration for me. He lived in a cave. He, he lived in a cave for 12 years just to bring us clo to, closer to our land. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of my mom, who is another person who inspired me. My mom valued the education very much. She emphasized the importance of schooling for, for all of our, my brothers and sisters. And uh, she pressured my father to leave the cave and rent a house next to a school so my brothers and sisters can well, be educated. And he did. Today, I'm a holder of two master's degrees. She would have been really proud of me, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, other people of my community, actually, is a great inspiration as well. This is Omar, Omar Shananir. Omar is living in a house that will be outside of the wall. So the Israelis are planning to build a private wall for Omar around his house, which will be four meters high, an electrical fence. Omar and his remarkable wife, Iman, were subjected to all different kinds of pressures. They were offered millions of shekels to leave the house. And they were arrested. And their eight-year-old child was beaten badly by Israeli soldiers. If you happen to meet Omar in the, in the street, he will greet you with a, with a great smile and tell you all different kinds of jokes. Most likely, you will understand nothing of it, but he still will tell you the jokes. And you will never, ever guess that this person is going through what he's going through in his daily life. Another person that is uh, something that you should know about her, Siham. Siham is a woman from my village, and she's one of the most calm and graceful women I've ever met in my entire life. Siham, despite the fact that her house was demolished three times, she's, she's taking care of her family, and uh, she led the rebuild of her house three times with the help of the village, the community, and internationals. Siham endured living in a tent for a while, for a period of time. And when her, child, her children witnessed their homes being demolished and dragged out with whatever belonging they could salvage, it was Siham who could take care of them. It was, it was her who took care of their mental health and nothing could crush Siham's determination to fight for her family's rights. She's still living in her house with the fourth demolishing order. But you will never guess that this woman is doing what she's doing if you meet her. She's just another Palestinian. She's just another regular normal woman. One last person I never met in my life. He died when I was young. Back in 1979, the Israelis confiscated a mountain to build Gilo settlement, to expand Gilo settlement in our village. And there was a man in our village called Abu Nizar. Abu Nizar was one of the landowners of that mountain. When the people appealed against the confiscation, they didn't have the right proper document to, to save their land. Abu Nizar took a trip to Istanbul to retrieve Ottoman land documents to protect his own land, to prove the ownership of his grandfather for this land. On his way back, he thought that they might actually uh, arrest him on, on the border if they knew what he was going to do. And they did. But he had given the, the, the documents to another woman, a stranger, just in case. And when they arrested him and asked him for the document, he didn't have it. He was sent for jail for four months. And the document made it to the lawyer, and he managed to save his land. Now, these people are true heroes. If a movie would have been made about them, it definitely would win an Oscar. And Abu Nizar definitely. <laughs> Abu Nizar embodies the Palestinian nation's steadfastness. All these people actually they are the representative of the Palestinians or the, of the Arabic widely used term, sumud. I want to introduce this term again, sumud. I'm fighting day to day with my community members who nobody would recognize if you meet them in the street. And this is the whole point. That's what I want to tell everybody today. And I want you to take this message with you to wherever you're going next to tell the people that we are here, we're fighting, we exist. And remember the term sumud. We are Samidin. Thank you. 
I like this. I like the fact that someone whistles for me. <laughs> I, I, and I also, I want to welcome all of you to Palestine, those who are from, not from here. And I want to give a personal invitation for all of you to be with me in this beauty, and I will be your tour guide in, in, in Walaji. Thank you very much.